I boarded up the windows. We should be fine. What was that? I, Any ideas? I have a theory, but it's gonna sound crazy. We're not there yet. We'll get there. All right. Well, just one thing we gotta do first. We gotta turn on the recording system because we can't have a conversation without that there. Oh, you're right. That's um, true. Is that done? Are we oh, good? It, it's on. Oh, okay. All, All right. right then. Well, um, <clears throat> has that? Well, anyway. Please tell me we have some recordings of that thing. We check. It's just two weeks of static. Fuck. That's weird. Any, anyway, hello and uh, welcome to What Is My Podcast About? Uh, here's another episode for October, the spookiest month of the year. I'm one of your hosts, Matthew Grace, and as usual, I am joined by the equally terrified Peter. Hi. And Keith. Keith? Oh yeah, that's me. Yeah. Anyway, our topic today, I think... A good topic, considering what we what just... What the fuck was that? Yeah, I think it was some sort of cryptid. Don't don't quote me on that, but uh, your thoughts? I mean, it could be anything, but I have a suspicion, considering what was written on the wall. Yeah. I also... So, I, I see you solved the puzzle, too. I also solved the puzzle, and based on what was written on the wall, I think I know what it is, too. Okay. Anyway... For uh, anyone who doesn't know what a cryptid is, like uh, myself until the, t the word and the definition were put together for me, a cryptid is an animal or creature that people claim to exist, but there isn't any actual evidence showing that it does exist. Case in point... Oh, being, then my ID's out the window. There's photographs. I mean, there's, there's video evidence of Bigfoot, apparently, and yet he's still considered a cryptid, so... Yours so could still be a cryptid. You're, what you're saying is a cryptid is a thing that absolutely does exist, but a small portion of the population refuses to accept that, its existence. Well, it'll remain classified as a cryptid until there's scientific evidence actually proven that it does exist. For example, the platypus. Platypus was considered a cryptid when it was first discovered back in uh, 19 or 1798. I'm not certain the platypus does exist. I've never seen one in real life. I mean, there's the famous platypus actor Perry. It's true. That could just be a duck wearing, like, some prosthetics. Oh, I guess yeah. so. But the platypus was first discovered by uh, Europeans. They found the body after they killed it, and they're like, huh, this is bizarre. Let's draw a sketch of it and send the pelt back to Great Britain. The scientists there are like, no way, this is a hoax. A year later, when they actually got a preserved specimen of a platypus, the scientists still didn't think it was real, and the first thing they did was take a pair of scissors to it, try to find the seams, because they thought some Asian taxidermist just sew together a bunch of animal parts. To be fair, I'm pretty sure that's just how the platypus came to be, was like, God just sewed together some leftover animal parts. That's a Frankenstein's monster. Got it. In the animal kingdom. Is Frankenstein a cryptid? Not the monster, no. the doctor no. who created <laughs> Frankenstein. Is he a cryptid? I mean, he probably was very cryptic. Fair point. Anyway, cryptol or cryptozoology is uh, the pseudoscience or subculture that was created to study these supposed creatures that exist with no evidence of actually existing. And despite the fact that there's no basis in any scientific study at all like zoology, it was founded in the 1950s by two zoologists. So it's a confirmed science. Yeah, zoologists uh, are real scientists and they created... Zoos. Zoos. What, what is a zoo? You keep saying this word. Is it... Zoo. It's a place where animals are kept. So yeah. like an apartment complex. For animals. Bigfoot. Yes. Okay. All right. I can get behind on this. Are the animals well treated there? Uh. <laughs> that's a different topic. Yeah, that's the topic for another day. <laughs> okay. I like this. This. What? A zoo? Is that <laughs> what we're calling it? All right. Cool. I'm on board. Let's do this. So our topic is about zoos today. Is that what I'm to understand? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, uh, cryptids. Cryptids. Is that right, so? You're saying that that thing was a cryptid? Because I have some pretty fucking solid scientific evidence. V is V. Me seeing it moving with my eyes that it exists. Well, can you prove it? I you... saw you. The three of us. <laughs> the oh, fuck. Two weeks of static. No, I don't think I can prove it to other fucking people who aren't in this room right now. Well, there you go. It stays encrypted. Oh, no. Let's hear Peter's idea, because I think we're on the same boat. 
All right, so. Let's, let's say it at the exact same time, okay? Just to All show right. how blank we are. Three, two, one. The Moth Kraken. Man. You think it's a Mothman? It was on the wall. Did Yeah. What? Uh, how do you not know it's the Kraken? How do you believe it's the Kraken? Tell okay. me this. Okay, so first of all, as Keith very astutely pointed out, the wall said Mothman. If you rearrange those letters, take out some, throw in some other ones, it spells the Kraken. It's not that hard of a puzzle to solve. We're in the middle of a city, 16 stories up. Yeah, and we can maybe see the ocean from the window. Give me a second. Uh, no, there's a big hill in the way. Fuck it, we're near the ocean, I don't care. Also, who says the Kraken has to live in water? The Kraken gets out and walks around all the goddamn time. You does it don't... though? According to legend, it does. Oh, do tell. So, first of all, the Kraken that most people think of when they hear the Kraken is like the fucking movie Kraken, which is like a giant tentacle monster that just devours ships. And for the uh, for the most part of recent history, that is what the belief of the Kraken has been, is that it's a giant tentacle monster that are similar to like a giant octopus or a giant squid that lives beneath the ocean that devours ships that get too near to it. According to several ancient legends, it slumbered in a unawakening sleep for thousands of years until mankind started fishing too greatly or some shit like that. And it woke up the Kraken and then the Kraken was like, Fish are delicious, but this new thing, mankind, is even more delicious. I'm going to eat me some of that. Uh, however, earliest records of the Kraken were not of a giant octopus or tentacle type monster that lived in the ocean, but rather of a giant, almost half crab, half whale that lived in the ocean, but also walked on land to hunt people who lived in small fishing villages. And so first of all, I know what you're thinking. That thing we saw for the past time is has no concept to me anymore after living without sleep for so long that thing had wings and also no crab or tentacle like parts to speak of i know you're thinking that right now you stop thinking that right now because we have already shown that the kraken can go from a crab whale hybrid to a tentacle monster it is a shapeshifter it can be whatever the fuck form it wants to be. are we sure it's not a giant nautilus go fuck yourself <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that meets the requirement of claws and tentacles. So most people, most people assume that our understanding of the Kraken comes from seeing the corpses of giant squids, which grow to be up to 50 feet in length, which does not fit with like the recorded mentions of seeing a Kraken at sea, in which it's the size of fucking islands, not like 40 feet in length. Oh, well, wasn't there a recent discovery, too, that they have found actual giant squids now? So, like, that's yeah. not, a, like, yeah. a rumor anymore or, like, a speculation yeah. that's a real thing? Yeah, that was one of the craziest things for me to learn about, is that until recent history, giant squids were also fucking cryptids that no one believed actually exist, and it was just weird taxidermy corpses that have been found. And until... 2006, which is just over a decade ago, that was the first time we saw any existence of a living giant squid. And that is, so for 13 years, we have known about the existence of giant squids because the real fucking weird thing is we know more about the space of our solar system than we do about the bottom of our fucking ocean. You cannot tell me that there are no krakens at the bottom of our ocean when you yourself do not know what is at the bottom of our fucking ocean. Also, the Kraken likes to come up to the 16th floor of fucking apartment buildings and fuck with people for two weeks straight, apparently. That's a thing I've learned about the Kraken during my research. I mean, sure, its tentacles are long, and we did also just have a massive windstorm during that whole fiasco over the past two weeks, so maybe the tentacles got coated in leaves or something. I don't know. It's the Kraken, guys. I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure you're just describing a giant nautilus. I'm pretty sure it's the Kraken. Who knows? Maybe the Kraken is a giant nautilus who can also shapeshift into, like, some weird winged creature that terrorizes people in their apartments. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I think there needs to be some level of groundedness to cryptics. They can't just be a freaking magical being. Nothing I have said is magic so far. <laughs> you said you changed shape. Have you seen any footage of a fucking octopus or cephalopod? They change form constantly and constantly, like disguise themselves perfectly to their habitat around themselves. They, they don't change form more or less than they conform their shape to other things. Like exactly. They'll, they'll take a coconut shell and use that as armor. Yeah, and apparently people are always confusing random things for octopuses too, because I played this game called Octodad, which is just about a chef misidentifying a man. Chef misidentifying yeah. a man? Yeah. Have you ever played it? The chef thinks the, the father of the family is just an octopus. 
And that's clearly wrong. I have never played Octodad, but this is fascinating to me. Just this idea of like a man trying to live his life, presumably a little bit awkward and gangly, uh, and just trying to like raise his kids and love his wife. And then a chef tries to kill and eat him. That's what I understand. Yeah. I mean, that's just a chef lifestyle. Yeah, that's fair. Chefs do regularly try and kill and eat fathers. It's a proven thing. But yes, octopuses... Like, if you watch any octopi, octipodes, 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 uh, octopuses, yes, absolutely, we all said the same thing, are known for finding things in their environment and completely concealing themselves to look just like it. Like, walk up, poke a piece of coral, ink sprays out and it flies away because it wasn't coral, it was an octopus pretending to be coral. There's no reason why octopuses can't also just pretend to be a winged creature. But you also said it wasn't an octopus or a giant squid. Yeah, it's its own thing. <laughs> this is just a skill. You were saying that the fact that it can change its form means that it's magical. Living creatures have been known to change their form, so that doesn't make it magical. I think it's a kraken, guys. I think we've been attacked by the kraken, and we're lucky to be alive. I mean, I seriously wish it was the kraken, if that's the case. We're but... the. I think the only reason survive, we survived is because it attacked us in our natural habitat rather than its own natural habitat. We had home field adv- advantage. That's the only reason we're alive right now, folks. Kraken. Well, I guess boats are on water, too. But still. Oh, no, I think I need to hear more about this Kraken. Yeah, it destroys boats. Yeah? Completely destroys boats. Yeah? Like, we're essentially in a giant boat, but on land. It doesn't move, but it's on land. And it's a structure. It could crush the structure. It didn't. We are on land, not in water. It doesn't have the advantage of the force of the sea on its side. Dude, octopuses are fast on land. Have you seen them run? It's freaky. What are you talking about, Matt? I don't know what any of us are talking about, honestly. I'm so very (laughs) confused. I am so very confused. (laughs) Yeah, that's why you're thinking it's the Kraken. (laughs) It uh, it is the Kraken. Alright, fine. If it's not the Kraken, tell me your Mothman theory. Well... Going back to coming from the sea, that's completely unrelated to the Mothman. So, I I was actually doing some research uh, while you guys were boarding up the windows, because I really wanted to find as much as I could about the Mothman. And the Mothman starts in... Wait, when you were supposed to be boarding up your own windows, you were just, like, Googling shit? I mean, you guys do such a good job, I didn't want to interrupt Is that why that window over there is just plated glass and no wood or anything boarding it up? Yeah, but I put the keep out sign on it. Alright, yeah, that'll probably work. Alright, go on. So, the Mothman... Uh, first appearance was November 12th, 1966 in a place called Point Pleasant in West Virginia. And I'm just going to start off by saying West Virginia is a pretty fucked up place the further I went into this. Yep. So the Mothman, and let me know if this is ringing any bells, seven feet tall, 15 foot wingspan, bird-like, mm. black, brown, and gl- gray in colors, red glowing eyes that drive you mad. No, this doesn't... Uh. I'm not hearing anything about any tentacles, so... Doesn't make sense I mean, to me. It was a little dark, so I couldn't see any coloration, but there were glowing eyes. I can and, testify that. And multiple sightings about the Mothman. The first sighting were it was these five guys in a cemetery uh, getting ready for a funeral the following day, so they were digging the grave. And apparently, they just heard some loud flapping noises, like we did. It looked over, and then, bam, there it was on the trees, just kind of flies off. It also chased two couples that were in a car down Highway, was it 62? And the car was, like, going, like, 100 miles per hour trying to get away from this giant bird thing that was flapping at them. It was keeping pace with the car. Uh, and the Mothman, my dad, is also an omen. We had that pretty bad storm was warning us of it. Hmm. Fascinating. Now, the Mothman, the uh, stuff doesn't stop there either. Uh, really, the point where he started becoming what is known as kind of like an omen bringer was the uh, event known as the Silver Bridge, where it collapsed, killing around 40 people. Uh, and... Since then, he's kind of gained a cult following in West Virginia. There's even a giant gold-plated statue of the Mothman there. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, They have a Mothman festival that uh, happens every year, uh, usually the third weekend of September. Uh, It started in 2002. Might add, also the same time that the Mothman prophecies came out. The movie, not the book. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm not hearing any conclusive evidence that the thing that fucking assaulted us was the Mothman. That thing had two massive fists that it pummeled Matt with. I don't understand how Matt is still able to stand up right now. Uh, I, I think you were just hallucinating. Because, uh, I don't... I wasn't pummeled, Keith. I don't know, my eyes were closed. Are you saying... There's no way... 
I remember very clearly doing a bunch of cocaine and then watching Matt get pummeled by two <laughs> massive fists. Are you telling me that did not happen? Yes. Well, not a part, the part about you doing the cocaine. I can't tell, confirm or deny that that was the truth, but I can confirm uh, that the pummeling did not happen. Wait a while. Oh, it's my back. I forgot we're being recorded. There was no cocaine consumption. There was just a pummeling and maybe not even a pummeling. Who knows? So, speaking of cocaine consumption, there's a lot of weird shit about the Mothman as well. Because uh, the red glowing eyes, apparently looking upon its face, will just drive you to utter madness. And there's some debate on whether the Mothman is actually headless or not, which is a beautiful thing to think about. The two Wait. arguments are the Mothman has a head with two red glowing eyes that are reflective, or he has no head and his eyes are in his chest. That is even more terrifying. <laughs> That's a very upsetting mental image that I've got oh. right now. So and <laughs> I was looking into West Virginia, just in general. West Virginia is like a hotbed for these types of things. That, like, people have apparently photographic evidence of just random shit with this. And he's not the only one that people are debating is headless or not. It's a very common one going down the list. Uh, just to name a few from West Virginia. Uh, there is the Snarly Yaw, which is a giant phantom dog, which doesn't hurt anyone. It just jumps in front of your car, gets hit, and then disappears when you go to check. What? There is the Sheep Squatch, which is a Sasquatch that is white and has, like, deer horns. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's the Flatwoods Monster. Uh, who lives in the Flatwoods area, and uh, here's a little fun tip for you. He crashed on a UFO and just kind of walks around the place. It's an alien. Ah, oh, of course, as yeah. you do. It sounds very much like Marvin the Martian, from so, how they describe it. Can, can we go back a second and talk about this dog that jumps in front of cars and gets hits and then run away? The Snarly Up? The Snarly Up. Kind of sounds like the people of West Virginia are just dicks and don't want to actually go out and check to see if they actually hit a dog. They're like, oh, it was the snarling y'all. Let's just keep going. Uh, there's the Grafton Monster, which is Bigfoot. That's pretty much just it. It's just Bigfoot. But with one exception. He fucking hates fences because he's known for just breaking fences. But he also loves fruit and will steal all your fruit. Kind of sounds like, once again, West Virginians just like hate their neighbors and, like, bust down fences and then steal all their apples and then, like, run away. And they're like, oh, sorry, it was the Bigfoot did it, though. This is also another one that's debated if it's headless or not. <laughs> of, of course. But he loves fruit. That's established. Loves fruit, maybe has a head. <laughs> uh, another fun just one. It's like here. nearly headless Nick. I, I, I think the headless thing is, once again, just a cover story. It's like, I can't be the one who knocked down your fence and ate your fruit. As you can see, I clearly have a head, and the thing that did that is headless, as we all know. Uh, there's another one, just known as Thurman, which is, uh, it was a woman who was murdered. Her body went missing, so clearly it's a cryptid. Also ghosts. Uh, and my, one of the ones, I probably laughed at this a lot more than I should have, but there's one called Screaming Jenny, which oh, is just no. a woman who was cooking food, set herself on fire, and now every time there's a fire near the train tracks, oh, it's Screaming Jenny. Not even, like, <laughs> sounds or anything. It's just, there's a fire near the train tracks. It's Screaming Jenny. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I so, should not laugh at that. So these are some of the things you can encounter when traveling through West Virginia. Really, there was only one really creepy one, which is the Bunny Man, funny enough, which is apparently a man in a bunny costume who's running around with a hatchet Smashing in people's car windows, telling them to get off his property, and saying, I'm going to balk you on the head. So once again... Is, is that really a cryptid, though? <laughs> That's just a man dressed... Because the police investigated the area, and there's no signs of anyone living huh. there. Sounds very much to me like West Virginians are just fucking dicks, and like to blame all their shitty attitude on fucking cryptids. So, the Mothman is not an unusual sighting here, so you can understand why he has, you know, a giant statue in the middle of Point Pleasant. Uh, uh, now, can I... Quickly interject and ask if there have been any sightings of the Mothman outside of West Virginia. Oh, there have been. Where specifically? Give me some examples. Uh, so, as I said, he is very clearly a sign of omens, and that's what people have kind of got it to. He has some sort of precognition. Whether he's causing the events or trying to warn people about them is up for debate. But he has been spotted at numer uh, numerous events, such as Chernobyl before it exploded. Uh, the Fidberg Germany mines before they collapsed. Uh, the Minnesota Bridge, and 9-11. What? Yeah, apparently there is photographic evidence at the of the Mothman being at all these locations. Okay, I heard about the Chernobyl one, but not 9-11 Yeah, one. apparently Mothman was at 9-11. Well. What? So now we've got a whole new conspiracy theory. Besides Bush did 9-11, now we have to consider whether or not Mothman did 9-11. <laughs> no, Mothman was just trying to warn he, us. Well, again, it's debated whether he Mothman is trying to warn us or he's actively doing these things. If you... 
read or watched the Mothman prophecies, it leans more heavily towards he's trying to warn people. Because in that one, Richard Gere's wife has visions of the Mothman before she dies in a car crash. And then the Mothman gives him visions of like, I think it's like 47 people dying on a certain day. And then he gets there and the end of the movie is that Silver Bridge when it's collapsing. And a police officer that he's made friends with throughout the movie is on the bridge and it collapses and they're in their car drowning. And Richard Gere goes in and saves them. And when they pull her out of the car and they're sitting in the back of the ambulance where it's like, 46 people died. It's like, oh, he's trying to warn them. And that's why one person that was prophesized to die on that day didn't because Richard Gere was there. Huh. So the Mothman travels the world a lot. I want to point out, since the Silver Bridge, he's not been spotted in West Virginia since. So he's out traveling the world doing whatever he's doing. Uh, he's tired of all of them West Virginians blaming everything on him. Now, here's the beautiful thing. This cryptid has an origin story. What? what? Hear this shit. So there's a place in West Virginia known as the uh, TNT area. It was a munitions plant from World War II. And apparently there's a lot of chemicals in this place that leaked out into the surrounding lakes and forest areas. And it's believed for the longest time when the Mothman was very heavily sighted around the 1966 time. Uh, the, that couple I mentioned, the two of them that got chased by the Mothman, were near this area, the TNT area. And it's believed that because it's a bunch of canyons and deposits underground that kind of like maze-like, the Mothman lives there. So the idea is that the Mothman is a mutation. I mean, that, that would make sense. But it gets better because I know we've been talking about the Mothman flapping its wings and doing all this fun stuff. Do you want to know how the Mothman flies? Flapping his arms? No. Sheer force of will? Uh, so Friendship? I found the descriptor of... Like a helicopter. Way too much when I was looking into this. What? So apparently the Mothman doesn't flap his wings and fly up. He kind of bends his knees, jumps up in the air, and just kind of floats there. So he flies kind of like Superman. And apparently he also moves really fast. So he actually doesn't flap around a lot. He kind of just floats there, looking at you menacingly with his eyes, and then zips off like Superman. I distinctly <laughs> remember flapping wings two weeks ago. I distinctly Ooh. remember flapping wings. I'm also pretty sure I remember Matt getting pummeled by Giant Fist, but that might or might not have been a hallucination. But I distinctly remember the flapping of wings. So yeah, look, looking at and Again, the Mothman's a fairly popular one. It's been in books, movies, uh, games. The most recent one was Fallout 76, where it was taking place in West Virginia, and they tried to use a lot of these lores to create monsters in the world. Mothman has appeared quite a bit uh, throughout... Our world and the fictional. I, hmm. Matt, do you have any theories? Maybe on he was what that showing was? up in Fallout seventy six to warn us about it. I wish someone warned me <laughs> about Fallout seventy six, or at least I wish I listened when someone warned me. But no, Mothman definitely fits the description of what happened to us a lot better than the Kraken. Although, go fuck yourself. It was the Kraken. I know it to be true. What's your theory? Well, I was looking for. I started looking up cryptids. And I couldn't really find anything else that could fit this description, but I just kind of got interested in looking at cryptids anyway. I started researching Ogopogo, since we're in Canada, and Ogopogo is a Canadian cryptid, but shortly found that that's not a scary cryptid at all. There's nothing terrifying about it. It's just a, a water spirit, essentially. And its original name wasn't even Ogopogo. That came from some musician who wrote a song about a lake in the area or something. So I decided to turn to something else a little more spooky to fit the theme of what was happening. An ancient legendary creature from Aztec myth. Okay. Mentioned in the book, or the 11th book of the Florentine Codex, which was a manuscript written in the 16th century about details for the Aztec culture, society, history, all that sort of stuff. Sure. This creature, its name, Awizotl translates to the thorny one of the water and it's described to be a dog-like creature with sleek black fur pointed ears sharp teeth and a long black tail at the end of the tail is a human-like hand it gets the name the thorny one of the water because when it shakes itself of the water its hair stands up on end like a bunch of spikes now it's said to be the guardian of waterways like and it lives in rivers and lakes what have you and has killed many fishermen and anyone who ventures too near the water because it grabs them and drags them under and drowns them. And a couple of days later, their bodies have always been found washed up on shore without any eyes, teeth, or fingernails because for some reason that's just what it likes to eat. Now, I mean, he could be collecting them. We don't have to, we don't have to assume this guy's a freak. Well, true, true, true. Because when those bodies do wash up on shore, since 
Auxodal is considered the guardian of the water, of sorts. Um, no one is allowed to touch those corpses except a priest that uh, worships the water deities of the area. They're the only ones who are allowed to take the body from the water and perform the rituals for the deceased. But if it can't get any meals, it also lures potential victims towards the water's edge with a cry eerily similar to that of a young child. And so when they reach the water's edge, they just grab them by the ankle and drag them under. To clarify, you think that thing from two weeks ago was no. a water demon trying to lure us into the water? No, not at all. Did you I, not hear what I said? I, you thought I, it was Okapoko, but then Okapoko wasn't scary enough. <laughs> so you just ba- made up a scarier water demon to hunt? Matt, I think that is it's, some of the craziest shit but it I've... is more plausible than the Kraken. And I did not even say that Aoizotl was after us. I mean, this sounds like it could be a cult situation, though. Cause it's like, no, no, no one touched the body. Only we can touch it. But on the topic of the water, there is another monster I want to go back to from West Virginia that I mentioned before. It's just kind of known as the River Monster. And is apparently this long serpent-like creature that goes onto land, beats things to death with its tail, and then drags them to the water. And the, when you're reading the description, it just sounds like it's an alligator. So there might be an alligator loose in West Virginia killing people. It's like, oh, that's the mo- that's the river monster. And for some it, reason, it just likes to beat people with its tail. Instead well, of alligators just will like snap at people with their tails. Like yeah. their jaws oh, yeah. are pretty good, but alligators will also beat you with their tail. <laughs> oh yeah, I suppose. I'm gonna be honest. That shit sounds more believable than this fucking water spiked dog shit. Matt. I, I'm not fully convinced that it's not a cult. Just murdering people in the river and getting away with it because it's a monster. Don't let anyone but these priests touch it. Yeah, that line of how no one except for priests are allowed to touch it. The priests are definitely a part of the cult that's covering up these activities. Now, now something I do want to mention. Going back to the Mothman. Uh, there are some other extra follow-up with the Mothman thing, because uh, there's been over 100 sightings of the Mothman within West Virginia in this time frame. And everyone who had claimed to see the Mothman was very quickly visited by people in black suits, a.k.a. the men in black, who were poss- apparently also spotted at all these other major events I mentioned. Huh. I'll say it again. I don't believe there's a single cryptid in West Virginia. I think people in West Virginia just don't like to blame shit on fucking cryptids. <laughs> or the there's an alligator attack. Rather than trying to catch the alligator, let's just blame it on a cryptid and move on. There's just like two neighbors sitting there. It's like, uh, Jim, did you uh, break into my lawn, smashing through my fence and steal my apples? Uh, no, it was... Uh, the Bigfoot. Headless Bigfoot. It yeah. was the Headless Bigfoot. But uh, he doesn't need uh, to eat. He's got no head. No, no, definitely not his head. He loves fruit. We Remember, we all know he <laughs> uh, loves fruit. That's true. Fruit. He does love fruit. <laughs> and, 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 like, most of these can be pretty easily explained. Starting <laughs> 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 off, if it is a phantom dog that's just fucking with people by jumping in front of their cars and then disappearing, that's a pretty funny way of, like, you know, doing your ethereal thing by just fucking with people. Yeah. But the idea of it just... People hit dogs a lot here and they just ignore it. It's like, nope, Phantom Yacht, don't need to get it in check, just drive away. I also just, like, love that one, especially just because of the fact that, like, the idea that there's this phantom haunting people by jumping in front of their cars. Phantoms are generally considered to be, like, relatively old beings and all that stuff. So for it to have developed this habit of jumping in front of cars when, like, cars were not a thing for a majority of human history when this phantom would have been around. So that was covered in the lore and it used to do the same thing with carriages. Oh, God. It also sounds like this old prank that my parents used to pull when they were kids. Except- Jump in front of carts? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Throw dogs in front of Except cars. These, these pranksters seem <laughs> to be absolutely horrible at it. It was an old prank they called Stump Monkey. They'd tie a rope to a stump and just have it at the edge of the road in the middle of the night. And they'd be hiding in a ditch. When a car drives by, they'd rapidly pull it in front of the headlights of the car and try to scare the driver. To clarify, are your parents from West Virginia? No. As far as I know, no. Do they like the state of West Virginia? Kind of sounds like they mm, fit never perfectly in with the people of West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'd be careful when you go home. Mm. You go home, your door's been broken down and all your fruit's missing. Your parents are like, ah, oh, it was the headless Bigfoot. <laughs> There's men in black at my front door. Like, um, hello, what do you want? What do you want? Uh, we would like we would like to spread the word of Jehovah. It's like no, <laughs> and like most of them are like you know could be like you know phantom beasts and stuff like that. But then like there's the two big outliers of the bunny man and the flatwood monsters, which is an alien and a man in a bunny costume who's just really pissed off. Also, apparently there's a bridge called the Bunny Toll Bridge, 
<laughs> that apparently appears near, and every so often there'll just be skinned rabbit carcasses hanging from it. What the fuck? Once that? again, easily explained away by just the fact that people from West Virginia are leaning into the cryptid thing. I don't believe there's a single cryptid in West Virginia. I think the people in West Virginia want us to believe there's hundreds of cryptids. What if Mothman was the only real cryptid in West Virginia, and then this shit started happening? He's like, no, I'm getting out of here. And that's yeah. why he hasn't been in West Virginia that's since. Because the fucking people of West Virginia like saw Mothman, got a little bit of praise for Mothman, and they're like... Let's capitalize on this. Let's make up a whole bunch of other uh, cryptids. And Mothman's like, I don't want to be a part of this situation anymore. I warned people that West Virginia was fucking nuts by being here. I'm out now. What else do we have that could be a cryptid? Well, there's that alligator that keeps attacking things from the river. River monster. Got it. Yeah. Jeff down the street keeps stealing my fruit burst through my fence. Got it. Bigfoot. I keep dressing up in a bunny costume and attacking people. Cryptid. Got it. <laughs> also, we need to talk to you at the police station. <laughs> But apparently this this rabbit man guy, bunny man, sorry. Bunny man. There's a bit of middle ground on this where it's described as a bunny costume, but also there's people saying, but he had real rabbit ears. So he's wearing a bunny costume filled with actual rabbit ears as a human being? Mm. And he carries a hatchet around. No, it's a bunny costume with the hood that has real rabbit ears sewn to it, but there's no head in the hood. <laughs> the thing I love, though, is when you're reading the, like, the encounters with them, he does attack with a hatchet, like smashing windows and stuff. But he's got very tame like language. Like he's like, "Get off my property! You're trespassing! I'm gonna bonk you on the head." In a way, that's just more unsettling than someone <laughs> shouting swears and yeah, slurs someone at you. like very politely telling you to fuck off while breaking down windows to do so is more unsettling than someone like breaking down a window and being very aggressive. I'm just, I'm just imagining like a Mister Rogers esque way of speaking while he's in this funny <laughs> costume, like smashing your window. It's like, uh, "Sorry to disturb you, but uh, you're on private property now." Toodle along before I bonk you on the head. Yeah, that's definitely how that comes across. But I don't know why you're so hesitant to say that Mothman was what it was. He's clearly got the backing with the men in black. He's got world status, been all over the place. He's been in movies and books. That is my reason for being opposed to it. He has better shit to do than bother a couple of nobodies in fucking Halifax, Nova Scotia. I mean, maybe this is a Bill murray situation where the Mothman is so famous that we can tell whoever we want the Mothman attacked us. He's like, no one's ever going to believe you. Yeah. But also, the Mothman what? It was becoming a movie at the same time it was cited? Oh, uh, no. So the first sightings were back in uh, the 60s. So that's when all the things happened. Then it was later on where a book was made. The movie and the festival didn't start until 2002. So there's about a good 40 years in between the Mothman initial sightings and what happened. Okay. Again, the, uh, the origin idea is that he was born out of chemicals, very much like Godzilla. World War II bad, chemicals made Mothman. Force of nature? Classic, like, cryptid explanation of, like, what hath mankind wrought by, through their, like, deviance by messing with chemicals, they have created their own destruction in the form of the Mothman. Also, if we're going through the connection of Godzilla here, Mothman in the, go uh, not Mothma, Mothma, or Mothra. Mothra. And, and the Godzilla lore is a good guy. Yes. I don't see what that has to do with no. the potentially <laughs> real Mothman. Yeah, it's no got one. the word Moth in there. Mothra is a fake character in the Godzilla universe. We're I'm talking about a potentially real being. <laughs> I'm just saying, are we currently being ruled by Rodan? I don't know. Well, Mothra stopped Rodan. Sure, okay. I'm oh. so confused. Ah, so am I. But at least Mothman is more believable than the Kraken. Go fuck yourself, Matt. <laughs> at least the Kraken's a real thing, unlike your water spirit that you made up to get people to buy into your cult. <laughs> well, fine. If you want something that's more believable than uh, Awizotl, and something that could have also potentially attacked us more believable than the Kraken, why not try the Wendigo? Tell me about the Wendigo, Matt. The Wendigo does kind of fit with that situation. Because yeah. the Wendigo, sure, doesn't have wings, but it is a very... It has long, elongated limbs, is very humanoid, and very emaciated in appearance, kind of zombie-like, and its sole source of food is human flesh. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't Wendigo myth, like, very much tied to cannibalism? Yes. And in fact, Thank there's... you, Until Dawn! Yep. Yay. And in fact, there's scientific... That's exactly why I researched the Wendigo, <laughs> actually. But uh, there's actually scientific research into a potentially actual phenomenon called something like uh, Wendigo psychosis, where humans will all of a sudden get the craving to and desire to eat human flesh instead of any other food when there's other food readily available for them. And oh, there's right. apparently actually documented cases of this. Okay. I know them feels. 
quick, quick, you know. <laughs> quick question. Is this all just an intervention right now? Is this like your guys' very subtle way of doing an intervention? Because now that I think about it, I did a big old pile of cocaine. We all saw the, mo- I assume we all saw the Mothman. And now you guys are just bringing up these crazy fucking theories about it being a Wendigo or this made up cult shit. Are you guys just trying to tell me you don't want me to do cocaine I mean, anymore? Is that what's going on I right mean, now? You just admitted it was the Mothman. I didn't see a pile of cocaine. Okay. Hey Keith, where's that bag of flour you had? <laughs> I think Peter ate it all. I was hungry! And there's a lot more interesting of these cryptids too. Like, uh, we didn't even mention one of the bigger ones like in detail, but Bigfoot is kind of like the big go-to one that everyone knows about. Oh yeah. Classic I mean, way of kind of explaining what a cryptid is, is to explain Bigfoot, because everyone knows Bigfoot. Yeah, I watched a video of, uh, the, the video of Bigfoot walking through the woods and that very symbolic look over the shoulder as he walks back into the trees. And I watched the edited version of the video where it's all stitched together so it's all smooth. And the more and more I replayed it, it just looked more and more like some guy in a hooded thick jacket and thick pants who just looked back and you could see his face through the hood. Uh, uh, another big one is the Chupacabra. Yeah, uh, my favorite thing about the Chupacabra right. is if you watch... Uh, fuck, I forget what the show is called. But it's some sort of mountain monster hunters down in the States. Oh yeah, I know the one. Uh... They have this theory that the chupacabra is like a pet to the Bigfoot. And so if you ever catch a chupacabra, you have to be real careful. Because Bigfoot will come and break o- uh, break free its pet so that it can return with it. It's a fascinating theory. But <laughs> chup- chupacabra uh, means goat sucker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so chupacabras are like these small demon-like creatures that people believe will come in and suck the blood out of your goats if you own goats. And then, uh, of course, another really big famous one, the Loch Ness Monster. Not sighted for many years now, though. So people are believe that if it did exist, despite the fact that there's no sonar evidence of any such creature living in the loch, that it probably died by now. Makes sense. Or it was the Kraken pretending to be the yeah. Loch Ness Monster. Well, the Loch Ness Monster was a cryptid that I believed the most in as a possibility of actually existing because any appearance of it any depiction from whatever blurry photographs or drawings people have done it always looked like some sort of actual dinosaur that actually existed so my thought was just maybe uh, when the extinction event for the dinosaurs happened this particular one got trapped in some underwater cave and still had a food source of some kind so you're willing to believe in the Loch Ness Monster but not a giant octopus I'm not saying the Kraken doesn't exist. I full-heartedly welcome our Kraken overlords to come to the surface and take rulership of the land. I just don't think it was a Kraken that attacked us. Now, I'm not sure we were attacked anymore. I don't know what's going on. The thing I really want to mention, too, is like the great thing about cryptids is the fact that no one has a proper photo of any cryptid, too. It's always, like, this blurry, out-of-focus mess. Well, oh, yeah. I think that's the difference, is the moment you get a proper photo of a cryptid, it stops being a cryptid and starts being a creature. Like the giant squid. <laughs> yeah. But, but, like, you have to run through some of the possibilities, because there's been recent photos still of some of these creatures. Like, even the Mothman has photos as early as, you know, 2002 to uh, a lot of recent events. But at the same time, they're still blurry out of focus messes compared with the technology we have to take yeah. photos. Like, oh my god, is that Bigfoot? Better put my camera out of focus. Better, Better start take... shaking it as much as I can. Better hold my camera in my Parkinson's hand and hold up a piece of wax paper in front of it. <laughs> Which got to make you wonder, maybe these cryptids are just naturally blurry. That's what the Bigfoot actually looks like. It's not out of focus. That's the actual Bigfoot. Well, they have some sort or... of supernatural phenomena that the, has a magnetic so field around them. The Bigfoot uh, doesn't look blurry to see but it emits this like low wave frequency from it at all times that gently shakes all like camera recording uh, features so that it makes the camera take blurry photos even if you hold it perfectly still so or they're just so visually terrifying that even when watching them through video or picture you're too terrified to actually focus on them your mind refuses to accept what it's seeing so it forces the image to be blurry to allow you to continue to be <laughs> so your mind can cop with it just like the platypus hey this body of this weird creature is in front of me but i still don't believe it exists i mean the beautiful thing with the platypus too was like even with physical evidence like no that's too fucked to be real <laughs> yeah we gotta figure out how they fucked this up to pretend like this was a real thing all right guys so i've got a bit of a question for you we've talked about a lot of cryptids and about how they get kind of different representations like mothman has gotten his books and his movies 
the Kraken has had oh so many representations throughout so many different movies and video games and all of Johnny shit. Depp. All of Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp has regularly played the Kraken in most of his films. Release the Kraken. So I have a question for you. Do you have like a favorite depiction of a cryptid throughout pop culture? Like your favorite movie with a cryptid or your favorite book with a cryptid or your favorite video game with it? I would say song, but don't pick a song. Don't have a favorite song with a cryptid. That'd be weird. <laughs> Puff the Magic Dragon. Dragons aren't cryptids. No, I know. I, I know. mean, could be. The magical, mythical creatures that fly and breathe fire. I, I mean, they don't necessarily have to be magical fire. It could, be, cause it could be something along the lines of like what the Komodo dragon does, where it has an acid that burns. Well, yeah, and the fact that the Komodo dragon has so much bacteria in its mouth that a yeah. single bite will kill a human. Though and I, the fact that the Komodo dragon actually was considered a cryptid until <laughs> actually discovered. No, I do want to preface with the fact that the brief understanding is that the original idea of what dragons were were just people encountering dinosaur bones for the first time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Th there was probably a point where a dragon was a cryptid. I don't think that the magical fire is a necessary thing for it to be a dragon. That's fair. Uh, so there probably was a point in time where dragons were cryptids. I don't think they would be considered cryptids by any stretch anymore. I don't think there's anyone out there who believes that dragons actually exist or have existed in much capacity although you never know maybe someone believes that i don't know your lives so do you guys have a i'll start with my kind of favorite representation my favorite representation has got to be oh, what's it called uh the bigfoot hunting game you play where you and like three of your friends can play a cooperative oh, yeah. computer game where you're all hunting bigfoot out in the woods and like he'll come around and sneak up behind you and attack you from behind and you have to like lay traps and bait them with food and set up cameras so that you can catch blurry video of Bigfoot running around in the woods. And if you do see him approaching, the first thing you'll always see is the glowing, what, green eyes? The glowing green eyes as he see, uh, stares at you from across the fucking forest. Yeah, it's a fantastic uh, game. And it's very true to what hunting real Bigfoot would be like, where it's just planting a bunch of traps, setting up cameras so you can hopefully get some very fucking blurry footage of Bigfoot. <laughs> And trying to stay alive if he is in fact real. Yeah. And the trailer is full of a bunch of beer bottles. Of course. Yeah, because that's what you do when you're going to go hunt Bigfoot. You toughen your constitution by drinking beer. I'm trying to think of a crypto that's kind of done like a full franchise, or not just a franchise, but like some sort of media on its own. It's kind of hard to narrow it down to. Fair. Because uh, I don't think we, like, a lot of them weren't actual cryptids that then did it. Uh, the only one I can think of is the Mothman Prophecy, but more of it's... Either they're living in as minor things in the the game or the movie, well, or it was a one created purely for the sense of it. Because the only other thing I could think of would be, again, Fallout seventy six is full of cryptids, but I didn't really like that one. Fair. But uh, in the Persona series, or really any Shin Megami Tensei game, they do have cryptids as summonable demons that you can use. Uh, so, for example, Persona, you get the different personas that you can use for their abilities: Mothman, Sasquatch. Like, there's a lot of them in there. Uh, alongside, you know, fairies and imps. To be fair, it doesn't have to be, like, a whole game or movie based around it. Like, I also really enjoy the Kraken from, uh, not from the Pirates of the Car uh, Caribbean movies, but from the Clash of Titans movie, when, uh, we see the Kraken get fucking defeated by fucking Medusa's head turning into stone and it just crumbles under yeah. its own weight. That's a really cool depiction of the Kraken. Bad movies, but really good scenes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad movies, really good scenes. And Great description. I was also going to say, the Kraken from that movie, really cool monster, doesn't really fit my ideal image of the Kraken, because it's a giant humanoid creature torso up with two large arms and claws, but then just the bottom half is tentacles. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. Yeah, it's, it's a very weird looking rendition of the Kraken. The scenes with it it's were It's kind of cool, like a little but... tiny man sticking out of the top of it. Yeah. All right, I remember now. But, That's uh, weird. Yeah, but my favorite rendition of the Kraken was definitely the one from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Especially because whenever the scene came when he'd raise the two giant tentacles to just snap any ship in half, it was always accompanied by that amazing grand music. I, so from those movies, I did really enjoy the scenes whenever, uh, what's his name, Davy Jones would summon the Kraken by, like, getting all of his crew to, like, lift the bell and then drop it, and it makes, like, this huge gong noise underwater, and that's what raises the Kraken and causes it to attack the other ship. That was always, like, such an intense scene, just watching them, like, slowly ring the oh, fucking yeah. the bell. The first time he did it and he was singing out, or that, belting out that chant to go with it, like, yeah. this is what your actions have brought upon. You know, the thing I find the most interesting, too, is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we don't have much knowledge when it comes to what's deep in the ocean. 
So the fact that there's not that many cryptids that are specifically from the ocean is kind of a bit weird if you think about it. We have so many cryptics about forests and, you know, woodland areas and rivers. But what? when it comes to oceans, it's just like well, there's barely any. Also because more people are able to go out into the woods. So more people are able to say, hey, we see, we saw this uh, thing. We caught well, a blurry image of this. It's weird because we keep picking crypt Like, humanity keeps choosing to focus on cryptids that are so very easy to debunk. It's like... There's a Bigfoot in this forest. We could easily just, like, search the forest square by square and conclusively prove there is no creature that matches the Bigfoot's I mean, description. maybe left. Maybe left. But, like, we can conclusively prove there is no Bigfoot in this forest. It's so much harder for us to, like, conclusively prove that there is no of this cryptid in the ocean. Yeah, because who's able to get down to the ocean floor? Uh, scientists with submersibles made to go to that depth. And even then, they're not big submersibles, and the fucking bottom of the ocean is massive, and it's still so much area to search, even if they go under there with submersibles. I mean, I guess there were, like, a number of kind of cryptic-esque creatures, like, a long while back. Like, I guess mermaids could have been on that list of... Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, Megalodon. Yes. Is that kind of a cryptid, I guess? Uh, it's kind of a cryptid, but it's also recently been proven to actually exist. But similar to the giant squid, it was a cryptid uh, at the same time. Is a couple of years ago, a little video feed did pop up of some research team in a submersible, just some video recording they had of something oddly humanoid swimming by their camera at depths at the abyssal plane. Yep. It only Hoaxes showed, are cool. Yeah, it only showed up for like two frames, so can you really say that they actually saw that or were just making some sort of prank? But Hoaxes are cool. Like you said, we know like 3% of our ocean floor. So, the odds that we haven't encountered anything down, or encountered things like that down there, incredibly high. Yeah. And it's also one of those weird things where, like, even if we were to, like, go out and map the entire bottom of the ocean, we still wouldn't see all the creatures that live there because it would be a slow, steady process and things could easily just move around us as we were mapping it. Especially if we're, like, mapping it by shining a bunch of massively bright lights to, like, see everything around us. A lot of creatures would just fucking avoid the light because... Down on the abyssal plane, there isn't any fucking light yeah. to speak of. So, and lots of creatures, creatures shy away from the light. And the creatures who do produce or do produce light, like angler fishes and their bioluminescence, yeah, they use that as a means to hunt. Yeah, and trap. So a lot of some fishes are attracted to it. Most learn to avoid it. Uh, now, there there's another actually creature that I just remembered myself that is from uh, I think it was discovered near Japan or the Antarctic. Which uh, is a cryptid that there's a lot of debate that most people think it's a hoax, but some people think it might be possibly a new version of a manta ray. But have you guys heard of the the ninjin? I have not heard of the ninja. No. So the ninjin is this giant white thing that's about twenty feet long that almost looks like it's a giant like pale white man floating through the water. Jesus. There's an image of what it looks like. Yeah. Oh god, that's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, so it was spotted close to Antarctica near Japan, I believe. Uh, around that uh, side of the of world anyways. Uh, now, the reason for it is there's a lot of images of it, but people have already proved that like most of it are, you know, doctored or interpretations of what it looks like. So uh, it kind of looks like it's you know, a giant creature with like a head and two arms up to the side swimming. So people are like, it looks like a giant freaking man. That's why the, the word ninja is, comes from the word human in a sense. Yeah. But all of you are like, oh, that's not real. But then some people are like, it might just be a giant mantis. Manta ray? Who knows? Yeah. It's like, I mean, take for instance the giant squid. Like, very rarely comes up to the surface, spends most of the time in the dark of the deep sea. So it could be another instance of that. Specific reasons why most of the creatures in the darks of the deep sea stay down there is because the pressure differential between there and the higher levels of the ocean are so severe that if something from the depths were to try and rise up to the surface, it would fucking explode due to the lack of pressure around it. Yeah. So it's very reasonable to understand why we don't know a lot about all the creatures down at the bottom of the ocean, like the Kraken, for instance. All I'm saying is the Kraken is real. May not be what attacked us two weeks ago. We may not have even been attacked two weeks ago. Who knows anymore? I'm very fucking confused about this whole topic. <laughs> all I know for sure is the Kraken is real. I'm not certain the Kraken is real, but I... I'm also not certain that the Kraken's not real, and I would like to believe that it is real. Because the Kraken's cool. Now, I'm pretty sure almost all of our cryptids have appeared in X-Files at some point as well, except for the Kraken. Oh, because X-Files is, X -Files is definitely 
picked the most realistic and believable monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, it's kind of a cryptid, but this one's more of like a supernatural entity. Uh, have you guys heard of Ingrid Cold? Yes. The Smiling Man? No. Uh, that's also another one from West Virginia. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> Just a Smiling Man. Usually associated with, you know, the men in black and UFOs. <laughs> to be fair, there's also like a whole world of cryptids which we haven't touched on, which are like the different monsters that exist in Japan. Uh, like, beliefs. Like, for instance, there's the... Uh, I forget its proper name, so I'm probably going to offend a lot of people, but the, like, toilet demon, or if you're ever using the bathroom... And you notice you're out of toilet paper, a demon can appear and they ask you if you want red toilet paper or blue toilet paper. And if you ask for blue toilet paper, they drown you. And if you ask for red toilet paper, they burn you alive. Is that where they got the red and blue pill for the Matrix? I don't think that's where they got the red and blue pill for the Matrix. Now, what you're getting at, uh, it's I feel like it's a bit out of the realm of cryptids, though, because that's more of like urban legends about spirits and ghosts. Because that one is a, a specifically a spirit that yeah. haunts bathrooms. Uh, it has things like the uh, the clack clack slide or whatever monster that it's just like you know the upper torso and it just kind of crawls at you or the scissor lady. There's like a lot of those things, but I would say that Japan does have some things that could be identified as a cryptid. Uh, one thing I come to mind would be a, a kappa. Yep, yeah. mm -hmm. a kappa. The river creek, uh, Richard, another fucking river monster. <laughs> Why are there so many river-based cryptids and so few ocean-based cryptids? But the funny thing about that is, too, is look at some of the creatures that Japan would have that could fit into the, the cryptid side of things if you take away some magical aspect of them, like a tanuki, with, like the raccoon dog and all that stuff. Yeah. And then you go to West Virginia, and then all the ones are like, okay, Japan's got a very different, diversified, like, okay, that can seem to be another creature. And then pretty much everything in West Virginia is just, what's going on? Come on, guys. Do you guys need help? Do we need to send just, like, a psychiatrist to West Virginia to just cover all of West Virginia with just, like, bringing in, talking to you, asking you what's going on with your day-to-day -day life? It's like, encouraging them to, uh, stop and check when they hit a dog. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, if you think you hit something, stop and just, like, see if there's something on the ground. I, I might be wrong, but I think West Virginia is also the origin of... Uh, the people that, uh, you know, oh, the hitchhiking woman in white, that when you are driving by, she gives you directions, and then when you get to a certain point, she'll say, that's where I died, and they just disappear on you. Yeah. Or when you, you're you driving them home, they'll, like, stop you in front of the graveyard. It's like, bye, and just walk into the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all. Uh, I don't know for sure that that's uh, West Virginia, but that definitely is that part of the states. Um, and it's local to a lot of those kind of spirit-based beliefs as well well that's kind of the beautiful thing about some of these cryptids from like as i was saying in most virginia ones can all be easily explained away like for example the ghost girl that disappears it could have been like hey i saw you driving down the back roads with a woman that wasn't your wife uh it was actually a girl i was giving a drive home uh oh can i talk to her a actually she was a ghost and she's gone now she disappeared and i tried to find her but she walked into the grave here <laughs> maybe she just didn't like you and wanted to get out of your car as soon as possible <laughs> No, definitely a ghost was not being uh, uh, not a deviant without my wife. Nope, I'm a law-abiding, upstanding citizen. I would never do something like that. Also, those were delicious apples you had. I heard from the Bigfoot monster, not myself. I did not eat your apples. That was the Bigfoot monster. <laughs> he told me through his not-face head that he does not eat the apples from. Yes. He also gave me some money to fix your fence. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> he did say he was keeping your lawnmower, though. Yes. What? I thought I let my lawnmower to you. Oh, uh, no, he stole my lawn, your your lawnmower while eating my your fruits. Your fruits. Well, I think we've come to a very conclusive decision that uh, whatever assaulted us or accosted us, there's no conclusive decision about. We've come to the conclusive decision not to make a conclusive decision. I think the decision we all gotta agree right now is we lock this shit down and we pretend it never fucking happened. Agreed. Keith? What? Are you I willing to agree? <laughs> I, I promise I won't say anything. All right. Okay. So long as the three of us agreed that this never happened, and because, also because the men no in black, one listens to this episode, that we're great. And the men in black already destroyed our uh, recorded evidence of the Mothman. Did they? We don't have any recorded evidence of that. Thick. I just have a blurry photo of my feet I took with my phone. True. <laughs> all right. I so there was no such thing that happened. Nothing happened. We're all good. All right. There was no cocaine. So, cool. Cool. So this was a wasted episode. There we go. All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening to our podcast. Uh, it can be found on all major podcast streaming services. And uh, two week or tune in two weeks from now for uh, another episode of whatever that may entail us talking about. So please email us what you think. Any 
possible suggestions for episode topics that you'd want us to talk about. Or just any comments, corrections, or if you just want to talk to us. Speaking of which, do we have any comments in the old email jar from the last couple episodes? Yeah, we, we do. So, some people were kind of saying things that you guys were... You sounded like you were kind of bullying me a bit. We sound like we're kind of bullying you a that I am um, very sorry if that is the interpretation. Do you feel like you're being bullied, Matthew? Um, Make sure you answer this correctly. No. All right, cool. So me and Keith will have to step it up so that we are very clearly bullying Matt for the future. That's true. All right, so next episode on hot peppers. We'll just do a whole episode <laughs> on hot peppers and we'll taste each one as we talk about it. That's true, but... Wait, is that a snake? Slithering around there. Did it just kind of slither in? I don't know. That's weird. That is weird. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in this house. Yeah, like, you've also got, like, a giant door to the sky. What? Oh, what? oh that's my griffin door. For griffins? Yeah. Are griffins cryptids? Should we have talked about griffins? I guess they could be. Um, but no, because one lives there, so. Oh, yeah, so uh, we so got... No, we actually okay. have evidence. Can we stop the podcast? That snake keeps slithering closer and yeah. closer. It looks yeah. like he's got a, a raven claw sticking out of his mouth. Did, did that snake kill a raven? Oh, Possibly. Must have. Uh, must have uh, stayed landed too long. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe if you uh, enjoyed what you heard. Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. the body, only we can touch it.